evening, everyone. Uh, now we will uh, have a discussion on subacute intestinal obstruction. It is a very interesting and a very vast topic, and we all have faced a uh, lot of cases in our residency. Uh, I am Dr. Sailesh Gupta. I am an associate consultant in the Department of Minimal Access Bariatric Surgery in Max Super Specialty Hospital, Patpatanj. And today we have a panelist, Dr. Uh, Professor Dr. Vinod Malik. Uh, sir has over 44 years in the field of general laparoscopic surgery experience. He did his MBBS from Kurukshetra University in 1976 and MS from PGIMR Chandigarh in 1980. Sir practices at Sir Gangaram Hospital and his expertise are in laparoscopic bariatric surgery, abdominal surgery. And uh, next panelist we have Dr. Vasu Varshist. He is a consultant in Sir Gangaram Hospital. He is a NK Mehra body in, uh, in his post-graduation. He specializes in the lab, upper GI and lab oncology. So now I'm going to uh, start with the first scenario. Uh, 44, uh, 40 year old male presented in casualty with a severe abdominal pain with a complaint of repeated episode of bilious vomiting and non-passage of student flatters for three days. He has a past history of pulmonary tuberculosis, which was four year back. And he is a known case of diabetes, mellitus, and hypertension. On examination, pallor is present. Pulse rate is 104 per minute. BP is 112 by 76. Respiratory rate is 12 per minute. On peridominal examination, abdominal dissension is present. There is a mild generalized tenderness. Bowel sounds are absent. So this is a brief history uh, and examination a patient has presented in a casualty. So based on brief history and examination, what will be the most probable cause or different diagnosis in this case? I want to start with Dr. Uh, Malik, sir. Uh, can you go to the first slide, please? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you mentioned that this patient has uh, absent bowel sounds. Yes, sir. Right. So... <clears throat> And uh, is there any, uh, what's been the kind of uh, patient's history between his uh, pulmonary tuberculosis and the point at which he has presented to the casualty with pain, abdomen, and the current symptoms that you have described? Has so he, he been having any symptoms, or this is the first time that he has had such symptoms? Sir, he had a diagnosis four years back. He took ATT for nine months and was asymptomatic uh, throughout the time. Just uh, uh, three days back, he had a pain and uh, uh, vomiting. So I think this is the first episode of uh, abdominal pain associated mm -hmm. with distension and vomiting and absent bowel sounds. Yes, sir. right. Yeah, right, right. And, and uh, he uh, has uh, had uh, no uh, previous abdominal symptoms, though he's a known case of pulmonary uh, pulmonary tuberculosis. Has taken adequate treatment yeah. and has remained asymptomatic. Right, sir. Okay. So this is a brief uh, sketch of this patient. And uh, absent bowel sounds would uh, sort of uh, <clears throat> indicate that are we uh, really dealing with obstruction or we are dealing with something else. So I would like you to uh, really uh, be a little more, uh, you know, elaborate about the tenderness and I think you have said mild generalized tenderness. I would rather know whether this patient has any kind of rigidity, guarding, tenderness. I am uh, kind of not really uh, happy with the word mild generalized tenderness. Now, mild generalized tenderness can be associated with uh, distended bowels, but by and large, you know, the tenderness with, uh, you know, where we have uh, uh, guarding and rigidity, that would, uh, would probably be very, very important in this patient. And I think even if they are not present, I think they should be described. Mm -hmm. in, uh, in the context of this patient, can we go to the second slide? That's how I would like to initially uh, you know, look at this patient and would keep the possibility of this patient having probably some kind of a perforation or maybe you know this patient has come three days later and therefore, I think uh, abdomen has become silent and initially started off with an obstruction. What could well be the cause of this obstruction? Well, uh, you know, this uh, 
that's i think very very important point in the his, uh, in the examination of a patient suspected of bowel obstruction first whether this patient has an intestinal obstruction whether it's a mechanical obstruction or a, a paralytic ileus whether it is uh, what could be the possible cause is it a complete obstruction or a partial obstruction and is it a strangulating obstruction so these are the points you know which will uh, remain always in our uh, background in this patient. The first and foremost, I cannot very clearly say here that this is a patient of intestinal obstruction because abdomen is silent and the patient has tenderness. So in this uh, you know, situation, I would definitely like that we I keep the possibility of a perforation right uh, in the uh, differential diagnosis, right? So uh, that's how I will attempt this situation. Vasu, uh, now we would like you, uh, how would you look at the scenario that has been presented? Uh, yes, sir. Sir, basically uh, in this patient, uh, we, uh, we, he had a history of tuberculosis, but that is four years in the past and has been treated completely. And because a three-day history with absent bowel sounds, it indicates more towards not uh, acute uh, subacute intestinal obstruction per se, but it can be something else. We need to and uh, tenderness with tachycardia in this patient also denotes towards that. We need to mention about guarding or rigidity as you already mentioned, and uh, also the absent bowel sound. To say absent uh, in a patient, we need to be very careful when using the word absent bowel sound because the uh, abdomen should be palpated at least, uh, so at least uh, nine minutes in every quadrant in order to say that the bowel sounds are absent in that patient. Every region should be auscultated for three minutes. So that is a very peculiar term to rule. And, uh, and generalized tenderness in this patient with tachycardia is going more towards a perforation than acute uh, intestinal obstruction. So I think as you very rightly mentioned, uh, Vasu, that uh, bowel sounds and in the context of intestinal obstruction, we all know that initially there are exaggerated yeah, bowel yeah, yeah. sounds and then subsequently, you know, bowel sounds become infrequent, but by and large in mechanical obstruction, uh,